problems. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to the website openoffice.org and download the application. Uh, this is an uh, open productivity suite, uh, meaning that it is open source and it is a uh, uh, freely downloadable, uh, so there's no cost associated with it. So click on the download tab and this will take you to the download page. Uh, and then simply click on download openoffice.org um, and save it somewhere on your computer, perhaps your desktop, and a, uh, and then install it. So it's very similar to Microsoft Office, and once you get it installed, uh, then you can open it up uh, exactly as you would uh, Microsoft Office, specifically uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, now, you're going to need to download an extension for OpenOffice, and the extension uh, that we're going to be downloading is a nonlinear solver. So simply click on the link of getopenoffice.org extensions. Click on that link and search for nonlinear solver. And after a few moments, uh, I should bring up solver for nonlinear programming beta uh, 0 0.9. There may be a later version uh, when you download this. Uh, so click on this, <coughs> and a, uh, this is a nonlinear solver that was released by Sun Microsystems on March the 20th of 2009. So click on Get It, and it should automatically download. So click on Save File, and I'm going to save this uh, file to my desktop and it is a uh, named nlpsolver.ox.t. So I'm going to click on Save and it has downloaded to my desktop. We can see right here is the extension. So now what we need to do is we need to open open Office. So we're going to click on Open Office and we're going to be using the Calc application. So this is very similar to Microsoft Excel. Click on OpenOffice.org Calc and it will open up a program uh, that is very similar to Microsoft Excel. I have a file that I'm going to be using, so I'm going to click on Open, and a, uh, the file is called Eager Beaver Example. So here is an example of how we can use the linear solver in OpenOffice. But before we use the solver, we must first install the extension. So we're going to click on Tools and go down to Extension Manager, and then click on Add and we're going to find this file, this OXT file, nlpsolver.oxt. I'm going to open it and then it says uh, whom do you want to install the extension. I'm going to say for all users um, and then click on OK and then you have to read the license agreement and then click accept and it is adding the extension. So uh, now the extension has been added to this application and we can use the uh, installed extension. So here is an example, uh, the Eager Beaver woodworking example. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at what the problem is. Uh, basically it's a small colonial American woodworking shop specializing in the creation of antique furniture. Uh, they build two products, uh, wormy chestnut chest and tables. So both of these are uh, recreations of antique furniture. And um, there, here are the resource requirements associated for each one of these products. So the chest requires uh, nine hours of labor and 21 board feet and can be sold uh, for a profit of $2,900. The table requires six hours of labor and uh, 18 board feet and can be sold for $2,300. So uh, our decision variables basically are how many chests should we produce and how many tables should we produce in order to maximize our, uh, our profit. So here is uh, part of the model formulation. We would like to maximize Z uh, equal to 2900 times X1 plus 2300 times X2. Now we have some constraints. The constraints that we have uh, are we have 180 man hours of labor uh, that we can allocate each week and we have a total of 504 board feet that we can allocate 
each week. So this is our complete linear programming model, maximize Z equal to 2900 X1 plus 2300 X2, subject to our labor constraints, which is 9 X1 plus 6 X2 is less than or equal to 180, and 21x1 plus 18x2 is less than or equal to 504, and also our non-negativity constraints because we can't have a negative number of tables and chest. So this is our model formulation, and we are going to uh, formulate this model in OpenOffice Calc. So our decision variables are x1 and x2, the number of chests, the number of tables. Uh, this is our profit equation. So as you can see, as we change uh, the number of chests and number of tables, our profit equation changes. So if we have one chest, we make $2,900. If we have one table, we make $2,300. If we have one of each, we make $5,200. And we can also see how our constraints have changed. Um, so now we're going to use uh, the linear solver uh, to formulate and solve this problem. So we're going to click on Tools, go down to Solver. We're going to click on Options, and we are going to pick the Open Office Linear Solver. Uh, let's go ahead and assume the variables are non-negative, and we can also use this for integer programming, uh, but we don't need that now. Uh, so we're going to click on OK. Our target cell is cell B8 and we are going to try to maximize this value because we want to maximize profit by changing cells B4 and B5 because these are decision variables and uh, we have constraints we would like this cell to be less than or equal to this cell so this ensures that we don't use more than 180 hours of labor and we would like this cell cell B12 to be less than cell C12, and this is, ensures we don't use more than 504 hours or 504 board feet. I simply click on solve, and it says solving successfully finished. The result is 65,700. I would like to keep these results, and it says that I should make six chests and 21 tables in order to maximize my profit. So this is an example of a linear programming. Uh, formulation. Now let's take a look at an example of a nonlinear programming formulation. In this example, we have a um, uh, 20 coordinates, uh, and these coordinates say can represent towns, for instance, the xy coordinates of of, of a town. Um, and we would like to uh, uh, place one facility uh, that serves all of these uh, coordinates or all of these towns. Uh, such that we minimize the total distance. So in this particular case, our decision variables are going to be cells E2 and F2. So you can see that if I change these values, that my uh, the total distance changes. So to calculate the individual distances, uh, we can set, see that it's simply E2 minus B2, the quantity squared, plus C2 minus F2, the quantity squared, and take the square root of this whole quantity, which is just a simple distance formula. And then the total distance is going to be the sum of all of these individual distances. Um, so that's how we formulate the model. Now we're going to use Solver. Click on Options. Now, in this case, we can't use the linear solver because this is a nonlinear optimization problem. So I'm going to use this evolutionary algorithm. And there's more details that you can find on the website about each one of these. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. My target cell is going to be cell D22. Uh, I'm going to try to minimize this by changing these cells, my X and Y coordinates, and then I am going to remove these constraints because I don't really have any constraints on where uh, this facility could be located. I simply hit solve and it says solving in progress and we can see that it is using in this particular case some type of evolutionary algorithm and it found an optimal solution at 1381.56 and it says that we should place the one facility at coordinates uh, 90 um, and 57. Now, if we change these values and use a different optimization solver, let's pick this evolutionary algorithm, um, we might get a different answer. Let's see what we get. 
and we pretty much get the same answers. So it seems that we have found a global optimal solution. So this is an example of how you can use OpenOffice Calc uh, 